morning, everybody, and welcome to My Father's Milk House, where I try to take biblical principles and break them into small chunks, make them what they were supposed to be in the beginning, which is easy to understand, and then maybe whet your appetite to go and read your Bible and to verify what I say or to call me out as wrong. Under the law, um, since I rejected uh, modern Christian evangelical nonsense, uh, I have been accused of being a Judaizer, a legalistic person, um, put myself under the law, rejecting teachings of grace, um, backslidden, carnal, in a ditch, blind, um, the gamut. Basically the same accusations leveled against Paul, Stephen, Peter, James, um, you know, all, all of the people. So I consider myself in good company. Under the law. When Paul talks about the law, he is speaking of, I believe, 16 divisions of the law. The law of sin and death, the law of faith, the law of Christ, the law of God, the law of um, uh, the Torah. Um, there, there, there's many laws. And so when you say under the law, you have to be much more specific. For instance, if you drive a car, you are to submit to the laws, the traffic laws. If you get a speeding ticket, you have broken the entire traffic code law. So, in that sense, we are all under every law because we have to obey the laws. But when Paul says under the law, he is saying under the law of sin and death. And if you are under the law of sin and death, you haven't pledged your faithfulness to Jesus. Not acknowledging what he did. That's easy believism. Nonsense. But pledge your faithfulness. The word believe is welded to faithfulness. In the same way, when you make a vow to your wife, you are pledging faithfulness. Now, to become Abraham's seed, we pledge our faithfulness to Yeshua, who died to ratify a covenant made to Abraham thousands of years ago in Genesis 12, which was broken by Israel when they sinned in Exodus 32. And then Moses came and brought ordinances. That is the book of the law. And that ended at the cross. Jesus came to bring us back to the book of the covenant and join with Abraham's seed. Galatians 3.21 then is the law against the promises of the Almighty? May it never be, because if a customary legal practice was given, uh, being able to restore life, then justice would really have been from a customary legal practice. But the scripture has concluded all men are under sin, so that the promise will have been given from the faithfulness of Yeshua, the anointed, to those who are pledging faithfulness. That's Galatians 3.22. The promise will have been given from the faithfulness of Yeshua to the anointed, to those who are pledging faithfulness. And that faithfulness of Yeshua was to get back to the promise he made to Abraham. But before the faithfulness came, we were in prison under the legal norm, being in prison until the faithfulness that was about to be revealed. Therefore, the legal norm, the book of the law, had been becoming our chaperone unto the anointed one, that we will have been administered justice by faithfulness. But now that the faithfulness of Yeshua has come, we are no longer under the chaperone. The book of ordinances set outside the Ark of Covenant in Exodus 32 that was brought, brought down by Moses that sat there until the cross. For you all become sons of the Almighty through faithfulness of Yeshua, because as many of you have been immersed into the Anointed One, you will have clothed yourselves with the Anointed One. It does not consist of being in Yehudi or Greek. It is not in being a slave or a free man, nor it is it being male or female, because you are all one in the anointed Yeshua. And if you belong to the anointed, then you are Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise made to Abraham in Genesis 12. So, if you have not pledged faithfulness to Yeshua, you are still under the law of the ordinances set by Moses and God in Exodus 32, 15. 
If you pledge faithfulness to Yeshua, you are no longer under the book of the law of ordinances set in Exodus 32. You are now part of Abraham's promises in the book of the covenant, and you, your behavior should be as Abraham was. He walked out the covenant of faithfulness with Yahweh, which means he observed the days. He observed the appointed times that were then. He observed the diets. He, he pledged faithfulness and wanted to walk. And he was given that knowledge from Shem, who got it from Noah, who got it from Methuselah, who got it from Enoch, who got it from um, the rest of the line, back to Seth, back to Adam, from the uh, angelic messengers sent down by Yahweh to administer the, the loving, kind instructions of an orderly Yahweh. So, if someone asks if you're under the law, you say, no, I am under the covenant. I am bathed by the blood of the ratified covenant that the faithfulness of Yeshua confirmed in John when he said, it is finished. His job was finished. The rest is, high, is heretic, blasphemy, nonsense, and modern-day Talmud. People want to pick on the Talmud as the oral law? Show me a systematic theology and I'll show you a Talmud. Oral law, traditions of men, and it all boils down to syncretized, uh, Hellenized, uh, Greek, mystical, mythological belief system. The promise and faithfulness of Yeshua was made to Abraham. Galatians 3. Genesis 12. You can't understand Galatians unless you understand Genesis. And the promises made to Abraham to be a blessing to all nations. I will bless those that bless you and I will curse those that curse you. And if you think that you can just believe in Jesus and then do whatever you want... You are cursing Israel, Abraham, and you shall be cursed. Don't be under the law. Be under a blood-soaked canopy. Be in the covenant and in fellowship with Yahweh. And I went over three minutes. I'm not going to go under three minutes. Read your Bible. And, and don't just read the end. Read the beginning. Read Genesis 12. Read, Gen read the adventures of Abraham. He's the whole reason. God came and rejected the nations because they built the Tower of Babel. Then he took Abraham and said, Abraham, Abraham, follow me. He took the weakest king and he took them into the desert and he built a nation. He tested Abraham. He tested him in the desert. He tested Isaac. He tested Jacob. He tested Joseph. He tested them all. And we're the last people. We, this is, we are need to be a Ephraim awakening. Joseph's children. We are not even recognizable as we are part of this Babylonian, Egyptian craziness that's going on. We need to get back to the roots of the faithfulness of Yahweh, the faithfulness of Yeshua, the faithfulness of Abraham, the faithfulness of the men that followed him. And away from this crazy, nonsense, modern, evangelical, syncretized nightmare. You want spiritual milk? You want to keep it simple? Throw away your theological statement. Throw away your doctrinal statement. Throw it all away. And then cry out to Yahweh and say, help me. I don't know what the truth is anymore. Because I tell you what. Yahweh will hold faithful. He will take you back to the beginning. He will show you what you need to see and he will put you on the path of righteousness. I hope you find it. I would like to have fellow sojourners on this journey. Because guess what? The, the time to pretend and, and, the, and the faithful, uh, the, the faith and the belief, oh, I have faith in my faith. I have belief in my belief. I have Jesus. That time 
<laughs> is done. Because the wolves are at the gate, the barbarians are at the wall, and the people are being uh, separated like wheat and tares. The one and dones are gone. Things are about to get all biblical in here. You think the Old Testament is boring because you don't spend any time left of Matthew or you think it's for Jews or you think it's for some weird divorced in Israel nonsense nation. They got divorced because of sin. Read Exodus 32. They, were, they had a blood covenant in Exodus 24. They were a multitude brought out of Egypt. By faith, they were brought out of Egypt. By the faithfulness of Yahweh to Abraham and by the faithfulness of the people who put the blood on their lintels and canopy, they were led by Moses the intercessor to the mountain. They were the first church of mixed multitude. They had a covenant and they blew it. It wasn't God that broke it. Israel broke the covenant made by God and sealed with the blood of the bull and the sprinkling of the blood over Israel and the ratifying meal of the elders at the mountain, on the mountain. And then Moses and his assistant Joshua went up to the top and went with God. And then within 40 days, Aaron, the high priest, worshiped Baal and had an orgy with the nation. Moses broke the, cov the co covenant, commands the, the, the agreement. Israel broke the covenant. Moses, Moses destroyed the document. Moses went back up to get the do a new document and brought it down. And they called it testimonies. And it was a witness against them. And it sat outside the ark as a witness against the nation of Israel. And God said, you are no longer my people. He told Moses, they are not my people. These are now your people. And that stayed that way. They're Moses' people until the cross. You read it. It says, not my people, your people. Jesus came and that was the faithfulness of Yahweh to send his son and the faithfulness of the son to, to walk and remember a promise he made to Abraham. By grace, you, by favor of Yah, by loving kindness, you are saved by Yah through the faithfulness, not of yourselves, the faithfulness was of God. Okay? Faithfulness of God rescues us by allowing us to be grafted into the nation of Israel, Romans 11, Ephesians 2, 11, and become a covenant with a holy nation, a holy people chosen by God. Calvinism, out the window. Dispensationalism, garbage. Lutheranism, who cares? Roman Catholic, it doesn't matter. The truth is the basic faithfulness of God to Abraham, and we get the cup of that faithfulness. There is no denominational um, hierarchy. There is nobody that can claim a, a, a systematic theological truth over another. Because all of us are made liars in the face of God. All of us would have, and have bet, who, you bend the knee to a green triangle thing in your living room? Might want to look into the history of it. The gospel is this. The gospel of the kingdom is this. God is faithful to Abraham, and we get the benefit of that if we place faithfulness to the Son of God who ratified a whole new covenant. Boom. Now you're on the path. Your faithfulness determines how you walk out that path. Your faithfulness to the truth, to the scriptures, to the instructions of Yahweh. Your faithfulness determines your path. The power to enable you to be faithful is the Spirit of God, which isn't a person. It is a power. When you plug in, you know, when you plug in a light bulb, 
you connect the power. When you plug in to Yahweh through the faithfulness to his son, you get the power, the comfort, the conviction, the clarity, the understanding, the, the vision. I'm going to post this. I'm going to probably lose some friends. But you can read anything. I, I, the Galatians that I said, Genesis 12, Exodus 32, um, the, the, the veil was torn from top to bottom. All through scriptures, you will not find anything that makes me a liar in what I just said. It is the faithfulness of Yahweh to the covenant he made with Abraham when he took him from Ur, took him from his father, was making statues for Nimrod, and put him out on a path of faith, a path of faithfulness. And Abraham was faithful and followed him. It was counted as righteousness. Not just, I believe you, God. Well, then you're righteous. See you later, God. I'm going to stay in Ur now, but I believe you. That is nonsense. The time is getting short. It's always been short. You know, God owns every breath. But now you can look on your phone. You can look on the television. You can look at, you know, your neighbors taking shots and having hard times and people struggling and people feeling like there's, where's the truth? Where's the power? Where is God? Why is it so dark around here? Why does Christmas feel weird? Why don't I give it? Why, why do these worksheets I'm filling out feel dumb? Why do I have to keep repeating myself the same verses? I'm not under law, I'm under grace. I'm da 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 da. Faith alone in Christ alone. What does that even mean? How about faithfulness to Christ? He pledged faithfulness to you in the process of pledging faithfulness to Abraham. He opened the door to you. He wants to marry you as a metaphorical system. Where's our faithfulness to, to God? Where's mine? Where's mine? I'm convicted. I'm saying all this shit. I might not even post it now. I'm, I have sinned. <laughs> Your sins are forgiven. For God so loved the world, he forgave. But forgiveness does not mean restoration. Forgiveness does not mean restoration. I made my wife so angry, she forgave me, but she was nowhere going to be restoring nothing with me until I showed repentance. Don't be afraid of the word repentance. It's a cleansing word. It washes your soul. I repent. It's a, I'm really sorry. Thank you for forgiving me. How about, I repent, but will you please restore our relationship? I want to throw it out there. If you have any comments, I know a lot of you guys are afraid to comment on some of my stuff for fear of, you know, the culture you're in. Send me a message. You think I'm full of... Uh, Dumb. Show me. Show me this magic grace. Show me this amazing um, do whatever you want. I heard, I'd ask somebody about something. Oh, I don't think God cares what you do. <laughs> really? God doesn't care what you do, what you eat, who you talk to, how you celebrate. God doesn't care anything. As long as you do it heartily as unto the Lord. How do you do something heartily as unto the Lord? As unto Yahweh. Maybe you want to ask him how he would like it done is unto him. Time is short. Time is so short. And yet it can be as joyful, like meaningfully joyful, not like, ah ha ha, I'm having such a nice time with all my friends in my club. It's, ha. This is amazing. Amazing. The truth can take you on 
these timeless, eternal journeys where God shows you his secrets as you pick out another little chunk of gold and just like draw near to him. And as you draw near to him, you draw farther and further away from Judaism, from World Church of God, from evangelicalism and all that paper mache and further down into the mine you go. And as you go, there's more and more. God is trying to drench us in gold and silver of wisdom and vision and power and strength and might. Not oatmeal and white toast with margarine and fake jelly. Have a nice day. Be blessed.